watch on mobile devices or the big screen, all for free. No subscription required. Download Beely now. For decades, women have fought tooth and manicured nail for equality and independence. But where has it left our men? That's well a hard question. More than ever, 21st century men are struggling to find their identity. I don't know who wears the trousers anymore. So many of them lack confidence and they still live at home. And when it comes to women, they are clueless. I don't think I'll ever think about what women want. I'm taking 10 hapless, hopeless blokes and I'm going to transform them into eligible, dateable, capable men. And by the end of it, find the hero inside all of them. Over one week, each guy is going to have to leave behind their sad lives. I have no clue what's going to happen. And face their greatest fears. I feel absolutely destroyed already. i got no freaking clue. Confront their inner demons. I'd like to be more trusting! And learn a few things about the opposite sex. It's the most physical contact I've had with a woman in a long time. Help is at hand. This is shocking. Just let out the rage. Release that emotion. It's not going to be easy. Right. I've got to get through this. I'll agree to disagree, then. No, no. It's time to man up. This is Josh Rendell. He's 30 and spends most of his time living in a parallel universe. I'm a sci-fi geek, and it all started when I was very young, introduced to Doctor Who, and it's grown more and more throughout the years. The number of DVDs I got, the last time I did a count, it was about 2,000. But I've watched all of Star Trek and Star Wars. I love it all. But his biggest love is his collection of outfits. I've probably got in the region of about 15 costumes ranging from a uh, full-size Dalek uh, and a police box. We've got uh, Cronin, Cyberman, Unit Soldier, and my favourite is Captain America because he's um, iconic um, and empowering. When he's not modelling his cosmic costumes, he's making them to wear at events. So this is what I'm working on at the moment. Uh, it's from a sci-fi game series. Clear out the area now. Josh doesn't go out much, and his social life is based around connections in cyberspace. It's good fun, you, you know, we, because we all have like-minded um, hobbies and things, we're all kind of on the same page. To fund his outer space lifestyle, Josh works in a light and sound warehouse with his older brother, who's married with two kids. <laughs> As a child, he was always very quiet, very reserved. Um, and on first appearance, he's not changed at all since he was a child. Josh always has time for play, even when he's at work. One of the things I quite like doing with, with one of the moving heads, you can make shapes and things with them. And there's one effect that reminds me of the, the Mistrons from Captain Scarlet. It's nice to come up with effects that, yeah, you're not supposed to do, but you can. Josh lives at home with his dad after his mum died 11 years ago. I've lived in this house uh, all my life, for, so for 30 years, and I've not known anywhere else. How's the leg doing? It's all right, mm. In an ideal world, it would be settling down um, with a girl, you know, white picket fence and, and all that kind of cliched stuff it is what I want. I do get worried a bit at times that he's on his own. If he wants to uh, meet somebody and, and leave home, uh, fine, all, all and good. I would like him to do that, obviously, rather than stay at home too much. Josh needs to break out from his fantasy world to find his confidence. So I'm bringing him to the Man Up flat in London to revamp his life with a vigorous five-step programme of reinvention. Cheerio, sure, Dad. Have a good time, son. Yeah, see you later. Over one week, Josh will be challenged physically, emotionally and psychologically to help transform him into the self-assured man he wants to be. For Josh, this is the first time he has ever lived away from home. Yeah, it's very nice, very cosy. 
and already he's visualising how his life could be. It would be a nice place to have a relationship with someone in. Now being in, in the flat makes it all feel real and that it, it's actually happening. It's the first morning in the Man Up flat and the start of a journey that could change Josh's life forever. I'm on my way to meet Josh to see why he's stuck in a make-believe world and hopefully bring him back to reality. There you are. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. you. I'm Olivia. I'm Josh. I know who you are. <laughs> I know lots about you. There's no time to lose, as I've got just five days to shed the teenage geek and find the man inside. I'm going to put it out there right. while you're here. Um, I need to make a change in my life, mm. try and get out there and, and, and do things in my life, stop being such a recluse. And, yeah, I just want to be with somebody, really. Yeah. You, you want the real deal, you don't want a girlfriend, you want a, a wife. I, I want a wife, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose if you want to meet someone, you need to socialise. I'm going to have to go there. You've had girlfriends. Yeah. How many and for how long? Uh, probably four or five, maximum of a month. That's not even a girlfriend. That's not really, that's dates. just... <laughs> You've had... Sexual liaisons? Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that. Phew! <laughs> so you you have been around women then. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you know what women want? I haven't got a clue what women want, and that's part of the yeah. problem. The, the biggest issue I have is I generally don't know where to, to start things, where, know, how to, to start, start off a conversation. Yeah, it's hard, making that initial leap. I don't know, something's just been holding me back. What is it? What's, what's holding me back? I mean, I, you know, part of it, I, I've never felt particularly attractive um, and I've never felt like I could offer something to a relationship. I think that's, that's always been my barrier. I think because I don't kind of conform to norms, I don't go to bars and, and, yeah. and, and I'm not a typical lad, you know. You know what you are? Husband material. You are. Mm. And that, that is exactly what you want to be. Mm. So you ready to do this? I'm ready, yeah. Yeah, OK, we'll go and freshen up and then we'll head off. Okay. Let's do this. Bam. I'll see you in a bit. See you in a We've got a lot of work to do. We've got to get him from feeling like he's worthless to being almost too good for anyone. So he's got that little bit of confidence and he can attract women because women do like confidence. If Josh is to have a fulfilled love life, he needs to start taking some steps towards it. So I'm taking him to a dancing class where women like the men to take the lead. As you can see, you'll be dancing. Are you a good dancer? We'll find out. <laughs> well, this is all about you interacting with women, flirting, having fun, and more importantly, let yourself go and enjoy it. Here's your costume. Go and get that clobber on you. And make it choppy. The mere thought of facing a room full of females sees Josh's fears swing into action. A bit worried I can't dance, but we'll, we'll give it a go. I have no idea what I'm going to say to any of the girls when I get out there. A little bit worried I'm going to make a fool of myself. Uh, I think I'm as ready as I'm going to be. I think there's going to be a lot of silent dancing, a lot of silent manoeuvring. He's going to have to open his mouth and speak. A smile, I think, is the best way to break the ice. Smile whenever they smile back and he can start a conversation. Yeah, open up with a joke. Yeah, that's always works. I mean, obviously, don't put yourself down too much because, uh, you know, if, if you say you're, you're crap and ugly, why would they want to go out with you? The best way to break ice is to give them a helping hand. Yes, I have rehearsed lines before chatting up a woman. I actually wrote a conversation plan on a, uh, on a, a card, a conference card, and pulled it out. Women don't realise is that what, what they hold over a man at that very early age, and they can crush that man. Joshua, oh! <laughs> You've got to do this now. Dance, yep. talk, flirt, and remember to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I'll be on the sidelines watching. Can Josh charm the ladies and find the true superhero inside? Do you want to tell the class a couple of things about yourself? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Josh, I'm from Bristol. Um, I like to dress up, but not normally like this. What do you normally dress, dress up, up as? Like? Yeah. Uh, it's usually stormtroopers and Daleks and 
sci-fi related characters. It's a nervous start for Josh. Okay, so I'm just going to explain a little bit um, about swing dancing. It's a very social thing, so lots of social interaction. And that's the way a lot of people met each other back in the day. Okay, so we're going to partner everybody up. So if you'd like to find a partner. Will Josh be able to make the first move? So... May I have this dance? Of course. Thank you. He's safely over the first hurdle, but can he step it up and start chatting the ladies up? Five, six, seven, eight. Step, step. OK, slow, quick, quick, slow. He looks nervous. You can see it in his face. Quick, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. Very good, slow, back, step, step. To stop Josh looking like a teenager at the local school disco, he needs to loosen up and take the lead. Now we're going to lead our partner. So it's about connecting. As you step back, you lead her back. Comfortable? Yep. Good. <laughs> Are you? Yes. <laughs> OK, shall we do a little turn? If he's going to impress the dancers, he needs to make much more effort. Back. Can I have a dance? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. OK, we need to talk to them. How do I, how do I start the conversation? This is it. Anything, say anything. Yeah, I mean, do I lead with, you know, what I do for a job or...? Ask questions, you know, where did you live near? Anything. Just, just be interested in the other person. I hope my gentle nudge in the right direction will inspire some conversation. Have you come far? Great. Oh, OK. So what do you do during the day? Um, What's you? kind of your favourite kind of dance? Um, I do a lot of Latin. I knew he could do it. I knew he had it in him. All he needed was a little bit of a pep talk. And now he's chatting away, Mr Chatterbox. He's exactly what I wanted to see. What did we think of our dancer, Josh? I thought he was absolutely fine, yeah, really confident. I just went straight into it. Yeah, I quite wanted to dance him again, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> if you met him in a bar, would you think um, this is a guy who's got his I stuff think he's, together? He's getting there, yeah. yeah. I think he's still got a little bit of work to do. What about you? Well, I've done swing dancing for quite a long time, and I've danced with quite a lot of people that do it for the first time, and I actually thought he did really well. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> How do you think that went? Uh, quite well, yeah. you got a rhythm. <laughs> i got the moves. You've got the moves, but I think you've got the moves also in talking to the girls. And I don't think you realise that, maybe. You know? Yeah. So maybe a little bit more self-belief there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well done. Back at the flat, Josh is reflecting on what he's managed to achieve in just one day. I feel a, a bit less concerned about going out there. And I'm certainly proud of being able to go up to a room full of really stunning girls and, and start a conversation and, and have a dance with them. And I'm still kind of... I don't believe it happened, to be honest. 30-year-old sci-fi fanatic Josh Rendell spend so much time alone, he's lost touch with the outside world. The biggest issue I have is I generally don't know how to start off a conversation. So I've brought him to London to embark on a five-step programme to help him become a more confident man. you got a rhythm. <laughs> i got the moves. You've got the moves. Josh shuts himself away from life, which prevents him from forming relationships. If he's going to turn his life around, I need to find out why he's got such low self-esteem. So I'm sending him to meet counselling psychologist Angela Mutanda, who confronts her clients with their naked self in a bid to get them to open up about their deepest insecurities. Josh. Meet Josh. Look at your face. Gosh, you look so uncomfortable. Is that upsetting you? Yeah, it is a bit. Why? I've never been one of those people that kind of likes to look in the mirror. Ooh. It's difficult. It's difficult, mm. isn't it? 
What I want you to do is to stick red stickers on any part of the body that you don't like. Why that? It's, it's the love handles. I'm not a fan of just that area. OK. You've got a big red one. What do you mean? Well, I just wanted to cover the whole face. And... You don't like your face at all? Not really. I, I, I've never been a fan of my teeth or my eyes. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of my hair. I'm going to go with that. Anything else? You're happy with everything? Happy with that. OK. What don't you like about your face? I don't think it's a typical symmetrical kind of face that is deemed attractive. So when you are out and about in costume and doing your thing, in terms of a confident person, how confident are you? It's a lot easier being in a costume. Um, certainly having a helmet on is, is you know, a natural barrier. You know, nobody knows what you look like. Nobody knows where you're looking to a certain extent, so you can kind of zone out and just do what you need to do. So would you say you've always been shy? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And who told you you were a shy child? I think it was probably your mum. Right. I mean, I was very much a mummy's boy, and it okay. was, you know, it's... Yeah. That, that was why it was so difficult when she did go, and yeah. I didn't really know yeah. where to go with life because of that. That sounds like that was quite a powerful time in your life when mum went. Uh, it was terminal cancer. Oh, dear. Um, which I actually found out about on my 18th birthday. Um, oh. So, 18th birthday party, all nice and happy, and then halfway through the night, I find out about it. And then she, she passed away around my 19th birthday. Wow. Um, that must have been horrible for you. Mm. I can't even imagine. I'd, I'd have dreams where I dreamt the whole thing had never happened. Oh. Um, and I'd wake up and, and then remember. So how do you, what's your relationship like with your, your dad? It's good. I mean, my brother is my best friend um, and my dad is a close second. And is that how it is when you... Do you feel like there are times you want to talk about your emotions with your dad and your brother? A family full of men. is that cliché of, you know, men don't talk about their emotions. The first thing I tend to do is... Block. Is block, block everything out and shut myself off from the world. Is that, is that what it's like for you? It's kind of a comfort zone type thing. You know, yeah. I don't have a great deal of trust or just general kind of faith in humanity. Mm -hmm. I am very much a solitary person, going through life, doing, you know, doing work, coming home, watching a DVD, going to bed. That feels sad. Doesn't it? Mm. It feels like you're saying you've sort of chosen a solitary life even though you're at home with your brother yeah. and your dad, it feels like you put quite a big protective mask around you that no one can get in and you can't get out. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's where I find you, there. In a bubble. In a bubble, that's, that's a nice way to put it. Mm. And I still have this image of how you obliterated your face. I want you to, if you like, in your mind, take those stickers off so that we can see your face. And if you want to start dating and start getting out and meeting people and having that relationship and having that life you want, you're going to have to unpeel it mm -hmm. and say, look at me, because I'm here without a mask. So I think that's your next challenge. I think because Josh has got such a tight kind of circle of comfort around him. He needs to learn to step out of his comfort zone, start allowing himself to meet other people, try something different and, and realise that whatever happens, even if he does embarrass himself, he'll survive. For Josh to make any headway, he needs to grab life by the horns. Time for a wake-up call. It's nearly midnight and I'm here to pick Josh up. Now, so far in Josh's life, he's been living in his little bubble and he's been keeping everything tiny and safe, which has actually had a knock-on effect to his confidence. It's time to burst that bubble and take him into an environment that is going to be a massive shock to his system. Let's see if he's got that inner confidence we need to see. 
Yeah. Midnight caller. <laughs> So that time already. It's all looking rather ominous, isn't it? Whisking you away in the middle of the night. Yep. Well, you have no idea where we're going. Yep. What would be the worst case scenario? <sighs> Being naked in front of a bunch of total strangers. Damn. This could be even worse for Josh, as he'll be spending the night in a no-nonsense male environment where there's nowhere to hide. Never hold the fish by the belly. How are you going to tell him? If he's going to get through this and avoid being the wet fish, he needs to break out of his shell. They're good, they're lovely. You want to go and get one in? This challenge will see Josh sink or swim. This is Billingsgate. It's the biggest fish wholesaler in the whole of the UK. You're going to be doing the night shift here. OK. And the reason we're doing that is that we thought it would be really good for you to put you in an environment with the kind of people that you'd never usually meet back home and doing something that you'd never usually do to really, really push out your comfort zone. Yeah. It's going to be hard, it's going to be dirty, and more importantly, it's going to be stinky. Go and get stuck in. OK. See you in a bit. How will Josh cope being thrown in at the deep end? I'm obviously nervous about working with people I don't know, but I think I'm more nervous about what to do with the fish. I'm not familiar with fish and how to handle them. I like battered and breaded fish with chips. <laughs> That's about as far as I go. This is a hard place to be all night with people that you don't know, doing a job that you've never done. He's really going to have to step up to the challenge here. I'm leaving Josh to fend for himself and work through the night under the watchful eye of stall holder Roger Barton. Hold him by the head, please. Who has over 50 years' experience in the fish trade. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Welcome to the Billingscape. Thank you. Now, this is all about teamwork, yep. communication, working together. I want you to talk as much as you possibly like. Yep. You'll be working with these guys. Okay. Good luck. Have a good day's work. Josh's first task is simple, to lay out the fish. Go outside and tell Max that I want six crayfish, OK? Six. Six tubs of crayfish. Six tubs of crayfish. Outside. Cover them up with ice, please. Got ten of them. Get a box over yep. there. That's it. Well done. There's your marker. No, you won't get ten in there. Use your intelligence. That's a good lad. That's it. These are expensive. We don't want them falling out the box. OK. Two hours into his shift, and already Josh is thinking fast. At the moment, he's running a little bit round like a this chicken, not asking what to do. Have you got a pocket in here? No? No. You have to stick it up your ass. If he's going to become part of the team, Josh needs to start connecting with his co-workers. All the time, Josh, communication, communication. I'm sure you all know what this is. It's called a telephone. So that's what we do all day long. We communicate with each other. With the stall ready, it's time to deal with the customers. But can Josh rise to the challenge? Now, you're going to have to communicate with them. Good morning, sir. How are you? What would you like? Some Dover soles, turbot, bass, grey mullet, whatever they are. OK. OK? We'll have no trouble with that. Josh, will we? Uh, no, I don't no. think so. I think you'll be OK. Don't worry. Okay. Over halfway through the night shift, and the customers are flooding in. But Josh is still like a fish out of water. I'm really out of my depth now. I'm really not comfortable. It's working with the customers and having to sell the fish, of which I have no knowledge of. After just minutes at the helm, Josh has had enough. I don't think I can do this. I'm really struggling. Josh desperately needs to find the confidence from within if he's to prove himself. Super shy sci-fi geek Josh Rendell is desperate to escape his solitary existence. So I've taken him under my wing to boost his lost confidence to help transform him into the man he craves to be. You don't want a girlfriend, you want a... I want a wife, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. So far, he's faced up to his demons. What don't you like about your face? I don't think it's a typical symmetrical face that is deemed attractive. And been pushed to the limit. When he's done it, count him, he can count up to ten. I don't think I can do this. 
It's early morning at Billingsgate Fish Market. And Josh has been working under the supervision of fish trader Roger Barton. But he's struggling to find the confidence to deal with the customers. I need to have a chat with Roger anyway just to express my feelings, but I, I can't see how I can go on. Will Roger be able to reel him in? Pardon? Can I have a quiet word? Of course you can. I'm, I'm really struggling. The issue I have is, the, is, is dealing with customers. Um, I don't feel confident. Don't worry about it. I can understand a little bit lack of confidence, but don't worry about it. You've got a good team around you. Don't be frightened to ask any of the other guys, but give it your best shot. As they say in, in the movies, it'll be all right on the line, and it will be. As long as you smile, take it easy, and off you go. OK, Josh? Good man. There is nowhere to hide for Josh. He needs to get stuck in and prove himself to the boss. But can he find the inner strength to do so? Rocky, in a minute, get me some more mackerel in some more outside. I've had a think about it. Good boy. Um, and I want to give this a go. That's my man. Well done. These are... Uh, uh, what size are they? Are they large? Large, size. They're large. Square, there. Yeah. yeah. One box. Yeah. Josh. Lovely. Get plenty more, Josh. Yeah. And then we will be off to Brazil. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, I'll yeah. make you a champion. One box of sardines. How much for the mackerel? 15 quid, sir. 15. Just taken £60 for one and £25 for another, so yeah, I've made a couple of sales. By the end of the week, you'll be standing here. <laughs> Josh has managed to turn it around, and he's even bonding with his workmates. So, how long have you been doing this for? Oh, two years. Two years? Yeah. You enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As a new day dawns, Josh comes to the end of his gruelling shift. Josh, I'm proud of you. You've done bloody marvellous, better than I did when I first started. And I sincerely mean that, Josh. Okay. It's not easy. You've been thrown in the deep end. Thanks, Josh. Thank you very much. When Josh died this morning at 12 o'clock, he was like a fish out of water. He built a tremendous amount of confidence in a very little time, and it's not easy. I've had men run out of here to their mums. And that's not lying, that's telling the truth. I think I've learned tonight that I have my limits, but I also need to challenge those limits and be prepared to push beyond what I think is my limit. I'm very proud of myself. What I've accomplished is mind-blowing, I think. From the hustle and bustle of London, I've brought Josh to the calm of the countryside for a more natural challenge. What have you learned about yourself over the last few days? Uh, I've learned to take more risks. Yeah. Um, to, to stop worrying so much about looking silly. Well, um, hello. Welcome to my world. <laughs> um, and just embrace what I'm given and, and just, just roll with it. So, so far, we're G'd up and we're having some positive turnarounds. Yes. Now, <laughs> we're in the middle of nowhere. You probably want to know why. A little bit. It went really well with you and the ladies when you were dancing. The next thing is about you getting a bit more physical with right. a woman. But not in a naughty way. <laughs> right. I can see you looking <laughs> slightly scared. Mm -hmm. Shall we go for an amble? Find our way there. Come on. I want Josh to realise that there's nothing to fear when it comes to the fairer sex. I'm going to reintroduce him to the naked female form. This exercise is all about the art of touching. Josh, Hello. this is Louise. Louise is an artist, but okay. she specialises in body casting, which is a very rare form of sculpting. We're asking you to help me make a body cast of someone. I get people wearing very little clothing, I cover them with plaster bandage, and I look at them in terms of their form. And the most important thing for me is that if you're working as a body cast sculptor, you can't be frightened of people, because mm -hmm. if you're not confident, the person you're working with will feel nervous. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's down to you, when you're working with somebody, to, to put them at their ease and make them feel happy about what you're doing. 
Will Josh grab this opportunity with both hands? Obviously, there, there is an, an anxiety there about working with a stranger, regardless of the fact of whether they've got any clothes on or not, but it's, 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 it's going to be naturally uncomfortable. When it comes to the female form, be it in real life or on the computer screen, I do enjoy it. It's a thing of beauty, all shapes and sizes. I've always, to be honest with you, been a big fan of boobs. Even just seeing a nice curvy back. What they will look like naked is not always what they look like when they're naked. I like women's eyes. Every man gets intimidated by a woman's uh, body. It's the moment of truth for Josh. Well, Josh, this is Stacey, who you're going to cast today. Hi, Josh. Nice Hello. to meet you. And you? How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Good. Obviously, she's going to take this robe off. So what we're going to do is we're going to cast from the nape of her neck down through here, across her shoulders, down through here, because that will help to accentuate this curve. Now, I'll tell you what, I'll do her knickers if you do her back. So if you okay. grab some. Time for some hands-on experience. I'm just kind of. Uh... I think you're being a bit Sorry. too gentle. Be, be a bit more forceful. Sort of like so smear it on, like that. He's so sensitive to women that he treads very, very cautiously. I think it's a metaphor for how he needs to approach women. He needs to go yeah. get him. I think firm grip. Come on, girl. I know it's been a while for Josh, but he needs to take a deep breath. And relax. A bit more pressure. A bit more pressure. You saying yeah. you can feel it? Feel it yeah. Don't be shy. Okay. Go on. <laughs> okay. A bit more okay. pressure. Just get That's stuck better. in there. That's, That's yeah. a really great bottom. You should be very proud yeah, yeah, of your too. backside, yeah. Stacey. Thank you. Yeah, just you just want that. Do you just literally there. just kind of fold it up like that. Or? Yeah. That's fine. Finally, Josh is cracking it. Stacey, how's his, uh, his grip now? A bit stronger? Yeah, it is. I can't tell the difference between him and Louise now. Josh, how is it touching a beautiful woman? <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> From casting sci-fi masks to casting the naked female form, Josh has come a long way. OK, I think we're there. Cool. Want your pants, dear? Right, no. That's big there. Wow. Wow. Your first body cast? That's really cool. You're pleased? Mm. Yeah. Thank Lovely you for, for letting me join in. I think Josh has totally Loved this. I think that's probably the closest he's been to a woman in, dare I say it, years. I hope this is helping with his confidence. Back in London, Josh is amazed he's managed to get to grips with it all. I certainly enjoyed the whole experience. The whole thing just felt natural and right. It's one more thing to add to the confidence list. Josh Rendell is on the final stretch of his journey to man up. So far, he's got touchy-feely with the female form. Josh, how is it touching a beautiful woman? It's very nice. <laughs> Faced up to reality. I am very much a solitary person, doing work, coming home, watching a DVD, going to bed. That's all sad. And survives some very fishy business. No, you won't get ten in there. Use your intelligence. That's a good lad. I'm very proud of myself. I think that what I've accomplished is mind-blowing, I think. With Josh celebrating his newfound confidence, it's time to ditch the dowdy dress sense for a new look that reflects his new demeanour. He's wearing shorts and a leather jacket together, so it's a little bit too much. He's just got a bit of a mixed look going on. And he needs some colour. I think all he needs to do is uh, change his clothes, really. For men, style is so much more than just designer brands. It's all about taking pride in their appearance and themselves. Transforming Josh from nerdy geek to geek chic is Gemma Shepherd. I think with guys, there has been fear, because I think the word fashion instantly gives this kind of, uh, it's not me. The high street is awash with an amazing choice. And I think the minute you start to embrace it, it instantly empowers you. 
Have you ever thought about style or look or how it makes you feel? Yeah, it's, it's something I've thought about, but I wouldn't know where to start. Everything's quite loose and baggy, and it's like you're sort of lost within them. This outfit for me says quite a lot about practicality. The psychology is when you look good, you feel good. It makes me feel a lot more confident, actually, already. I'm not 100% convinced on that, but let's try some more. Are you enjoying it? No, I am, yeah, I, I, I like it. Ultimately, clothes make you feel confident when you get it right. The minute that you start to apply that little bit of extra effort, people are noticing you. Colour is interesting for you to explore. It really has started to kind of define who the new Josh is. Kind of, you look like you, you're ready to go. Clothes sorted, it's time to tackle Josh's unruly mop. Cropping it short will give him the contemporary look he needs. Helped by getting rid of his shabby stubble. But that's not the only hair that needs stripping off. Pack waxing is a new experience for me. I'm a little worried about the pain, but I'm hoping I can man up and take it. You okay? Mm. Josh has gone from shy sci-fi fanatic to a swish-looking man with some swagger. I don't even recognise you. You put the chic into geek. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. It's very trendy. Blue's your colour, evidently. It brings out your eyes. Yep. You're glowing. You look very happy. I am happy. I'm really pleased with how I've done. I, I you know, I'm, I'm happy with what I've achieved. What a week it's been. Mm. And we're now here at the end of it. What's so, been the hardest part? Certainly the, uh, uh, the fish market. What did you learn about yourself from that? I, I think it's, um not being afraid to put myself out there, putting myself in more social situations. Um, going out. Going out, yeah. Maybe. Going out is a good that's start, a, yeah, That's yeah. a really good start, yeah. <laughs> Socialising, uh, yeah, Josh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm really proud of you. I think you've done some really good, difficult work and you've surprised not only yourself but me. Oh. <laughs> Just like this, with your newfound confidence, you can pull easily. Josh, you have a date tonight. But let me tell you, she's a beauty and wife material. Flirt, be playful, take her phone number. So be me. So be you. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Mr. Confident. <laughs> <laughs> when I first met Josh, his confidence was zero. And I feel like all the stuff that we've done this week has really helped. And I think finally he feels good in his own skin. And that's, that's what you can ask for, really. And that's the start of all of it. Once he starts getting that confidence, he can have what he wants. He can find his wife. With Josh about to have his first date in over a year, will he be able to step up to the plate? On the menu tonight is a chicken noodle stir fry. I think the only thing that could go wrong with the cooking tonight is potentially it being underdone. I could give a food poisoning. Being on toast and soup is usually about my, my level, but not too bad with a wok. Yeah, that's about it. This week has made Josh realise that if he takes risks, the chance of finding a wife could be one step closer. But will he manage to hold his nerve? I've decided not to overthink it. I'm just going to let the conversation happen. I don't want to think too much about it, and that's where I think things are going to go wrong. Josh doesn't know it yet, but his date for the evening is Tasha one of the dancers he met at the swing class. I'm actually really looking forward to it. I'm fascinated by the fact that he dresses up like stormtroopers. And I did think he was an interesting guy, and he's from Bristol, which is near where I'm from. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Lovely to again. see you, Josh. How are you? Very well, thank you. And yourself? I'm okay, thank you. Nice to see you. Do come in. Thank you. I have something for you. For me? Wait, right there, I say. OK. <laughs> These are for you. Thank you so much. They're lovely. Thank you. Thank you. I feel bad now. I've got nothing. No, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, are you, uh, you ready to eat? Yes. Can, can I get you a drink at all? Uh, a wine or a, I'd a water? I'd love a glass of wine. Uh, is, uh, 
Is that one okay for you? Brazier, that'd be lovely. Thank you. It's an encouraging start, and Josh already has a twinkle okay. in his eye. Yeah, I'm very pleased that she, uh, that she's the one. Keen to make sure he doesn't mess up the meal, Josh forgets his date is even there. Do you want, do you want me help? Uh, you can come in if you like, and I can chat to you while I'm cooking. OK. Are you much of a cook? Not really much of a cook. Is it that obvious? No, no. <laughs> At least I don't have to dance while I'm doing this. No, this that, is true. That would go very wrong. <laughs> that would have really made it perfect. Now dance and cook and be friendly. You do look very different to the way you looked on Tuesday. Good different? Yes. Good. That's what I'm going for. Good different. <laughs> It's looking quite promising. What could possibly go wrong? I'm really sorry, um, but I've forgotten your name. Oh, wow. <laughs> because that was Tuesday, and it that was, was a whole week ago. ago. It's Tasha. Tasha. Lovely to meet you again, Tasha. Lovely to meet you again. Nice to <laughs> see you. Well done. You. Can he claw back some brownie points with his signature dish? This is actually really delicious. Thank you. This is really good. Don't sound too surprised. I'm pretty sure I'm amazing. Oh, oh, I thought you were supposed to be <laughs> unconfident. <laughs> and now that, you're that sure. That was last week. It's, you know, it's all true. Okay, now you're sure you're amazing. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Liv. <laughs> I can't remember the last time somebody made me dinner. <laughs> it was oh. really kind of you. Thank you. I think it's going better than expected. I don't think dinner was a disaster, so that's a good start. I think she's got a lovely personality. Um, and I think we had a, a connection. Josh's newly found confidence has won him a brand new admirer. And you do dress up like Batman? I don't dress up like Batman. It's on my wish list. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be really cheeky and, uh, and ask, could I get your number? Oh, wow. I'm going to go for it. <laughs> well, yeah, you're going to come up and go swing dancing. I certainly want to, uh, want to come back as well. Yeah. yeah, I'll give you my number. Thank you very much. Thanks again for coming. It was lovely to see you. And it will be in touch. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Good night. I had a really nice time. I think we might stay in touch, particularly if he wants to come swing dancing. I think we might see each other again. I think it went really well. Um, I'm ecstatic as to how well it went. It's been a long time since I've been made to feel this special, and it, it feels Feels really good. I've certainly noticed I'm a lot happier myself. I'm certainly a lot happier with my outer appearance. If you feel good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Since the date with Tasha, we, we have spoken on the phone a few times, and if nothing else, we've become great friends. I, I certainly think there is a bond there. Cheers. I've certainly been doing a lot more. <laughs> I've been doing stuff every week. You know a pallet's usually made of wood. Do you know how we work in a warehouse? <laughs> imagine, imagine if it was made out of plastic. I think this experience has, has given me more drive <laughs> to do the things I want to do, not be afraid of stepping out of my comfort zone um, and just enjoying life. <laughs>